Hello and welcome once again to Cheap Shot Entertainment. You are the Cheap Shot Nation and I am your host, Luke. And we're going to take you through everything that happened in episode 37 of NXT UK this week. It was aired on the WWE Network on the 3rd of April 2019. And again, for a go-home show, they really picked up the pace on this one, furthering storylines and things. Lack of matches again, but uh, the main event match was absolutely fantastic. And also we got a hype package going into TakeOver New York where Pete Dunne will defend his WWE UK Championship against the ring general Walter. And that happens this Friday on the 6th of April 2019. We're going to be watching it live. Give us a tweet on Twitter and Facebook and Instagram. Of course, you can follow us on all three of those and do all the youtube type stuff as well. Without further ado, I'm going to take you into the first match. Enjoy the video and if you like the video, give it a thumbs up and leave a comment down below as to what you think is going to happen this Friday between Pete Dunne and Walter. We'll be interested to hear from you. Hold, seat, hold on to your seats, Cheap Shot Nation. Here we go. So we're at the Go Home Show before NXT TakeOver New York on NXT UK. It will be Pete Dunne versus Walter for the WWE UK Championship on that show. In the meantime, we're at the Coventry Sky Dome for the last show filmed there at the back end of February. We're going to go north of the border next week to Scotland. Um, as Noam Dar said a couple of weeks ago, Scotland. Uh, so like I say, go home show before TakeOver New York. We go into the first match, which is a tag team match scheduled for 1-4. And I hear you all shouting 1-4. Uh, it's Kenny Williams versus, and Alia Jordan versus Martel Bartel and Fabian Eichner. Now, Fabian Eichner and Marcel Bartel have been on an absolute tear recently on both NXT and NXT UK, which has been absolutely fantastic. Um, love these two. Very much um, a throwback to teams of old. Lots of power, lots of jumping ability, and just very, very sort of in-your-face and hard-hitting. I love these two as a tag team. However, Kenny Williams and Amir Jordan are brilliant as well. Uh, fan favourites, of course, um, over Eichner and Bartel. And they would, against the odds, pick up the victory in this match. Um, it would be uh, Fabian Eichner and Martel Bartel uh, who would lose this match after a launching uh, catch suplex, stalling suplex is the only way I can describe it. I don't think they've got a proper name for it yet in terms of a tag team move. Uh, very impressive indeed. Uh, Eichner, uh, Bartel throws their opponent into Eichner. Eichner catches them, stalls on the suplex, does eventually drop them. Didn't work for them this time. Uh, Kenny Williams with a sharp knee to the top of the head of Eichner as Bartel was distracted by the referee getting out of the ring. Um, it would be that that would knock Eichner silly. Uh, Williams would roll down for the um, roll-up pin victory. Um, so your winners in this match are uh, Amir Jordan and Kenny Williams gaining momentum in the tag team division. Um, which in a couple of weeks ago, a couple of months ago, you would never have thought that would have been happening. But obviously something's clicked with them now. And they're gaining momentum with victory after victory. And uh, hey, I can deal with that. Love Amir Jordan. Kenny Williams is also a lot of fun as well. I love both of these teams. As you can probably guess from the video and how much I say love. Love! Anyway, uh, yeah, so Kenny Williams and Amir Jordan pick up the victory in this one. Um, again, against the run of play. So with General Manager Johnny Saint and Assistant General Manager Squid Scala uh, outside their office, uh, the Irish ace Jordan Devlin uh, interrupts them uh, with a microphone saying that um, Walter's just walked in here like some giant baby 
and just gone straight into a title match uh, for the championship against Pete Dunne. He also says that he will be watching because you never bet against the ace and uh, Jordan Devlin wants another shot at that championship. We then go straight on to a women's division match. It is Isla Dawn and Kaylee Ray, two uh, north of the border wrestlers. Kaylee Ray, um, very well uh, thought of on the independent circuit. Isla Dawn has been impressing me on NXT UK. Not seen her in person, uh, but she's definitely impressive in an NXT ring. Even going for the championship against. Rhea Ripley when she was champion um, but there's no um, camaraderie between these two we're not going to see a a female version of Gallus um, and obviously Piper Niven is making her debut next week so we're definitely not going to get that but we may get like a, a, a triple threat match between three Scots women which I can deal with because all of these ladies have been um, I would imagine in uh, ICW at some point, which is uh, great to put on your CV as a wrestler anyway. Uh, but it would be uh, Kaylee Ray, the relative newcomer in NXT UK, with Isla Dawn uh, being part of the second May Young Classic um, back in the summer of last year. Um, and it would be Kaylee Ray who would pick up the victory with a don't look down, gory bomb for the win after Isla Dawn put up a good fight, but the experience edge of Kaylee Ray came through on this one with that finishing move. Isla Dawn could not kick out, and we got the pin for the win. And Kaylee Ray is your winner, gaining some momentum in the championship picture with the NXT UK Women's Championship being defended next week. You can bet that both of these ladies are going to be watching that match on NXT UK episode number 38. We then get an interview with Tony Storm, the current NXT UK Women's Champion, but she is cut off unceremoniously by an attack from her opponent next week on next week's show which would be Ginny. Uh, she is attacked, thrown into the um, boxes of equipment and uh, referees frantically call for help for Tony Storm as she lays sparked out on the floor. Travis Banks up next with a call out of Cassius Ono, the Kiwi buzzsaw wants to show Cassius Ono how we do things over here in the UK. I'm pretty sure Cassius Ono will not back down from that one. Um, these are all pre-recorded videos and we then get a promo from the Grizzled Young Veterans and soon to still be your NXT UK Tag Team Champions. It is Liverpool's number one, Zach Gibson and James Drake or Arseface as he is lovingly known by the NXT UK Universe. They cut a promo uh, on Amir Jordan and Kenny Williams, you see. Um, so they cut that promo and it looks like we're pretty much set. As soon as it, Zach Gibson is cleared after um, being viciously attacked by um, their last opponents, who I've completely forgotten the name of, which is really bad. So as soon as Zach Gibson is cleared after being viciously attacked by Danny Birch and Oni Larkin in their match, I'm pretty sure this match is going to happen um, down the line. So there you go, you got a promo from uh, the Grizzled Young Veterans, including an arse face chant and a shoes off if you hate Gibson chant. I don't hate Gibson, I really want one of his t-shirts, Zach if you're watching send one my way, size XL please, thank you very much. Anyway we get um, a couple of announcements, like I say Viper is debuting next week on the show, expect a squash match for that. We also get Banks versus Ono, that was made 
uh, pretty much as soon as Travis Banks called Ono out. And the women's championship, of course, is Tony Storm, the current reigning and defending NXT UK women's champion. And she will be defending against the fashion e fashion fashionista. No nonsense, fashionista. Uh, Ginny, uh, not my favourite. Tony Storm is really good. Ginny, I can respect her ability in the ring, but the the concept of the no nonsense non nonsense fashionista because I can't say it uh, just annoys me a little bit. Uh, it's just one of those things, isn't it? Uh, not everyone can like everybody, and that's what makes professional wrestling so fantastic. So we're on to your main event now. It is Trent Seven versus Joe Coffey having called Trent Seven out last week. Uh, Joe Coffey uh, responded by taking his uh, uh, taking his um, match taking his game to Trent Seven in fact I'll get my words out eventually I have no script for these things just uh, straight from the hip which is why I do the, these things as well which is I've been told quite entertaining anyway to his Trent Seven they called Joe Coffey out last week saying that he's very much concentrated on Mustache Mountain but he's got to concentrate on his singles career as well and that will improve his ability as a tag team partner to Tyler Bate who got the massive victory over James Drake last week in a singles singles match against one half of the tag team champions um, after lots of fighting outside inside outside the ring um, there was a massive focus on Trent Seven's back, uh, Joe Coffey dropping him onto the barricade and then wrapping him, wrapping Trent Seven around the post. Uh, Trent Seven tried to get the Trent Seven army behind him, uh, but Coffey was in control for most of this match. It wouldn't be until the Trent Seven army got into full flow that Trent Seven would come back with um, a figure four leg lock which is difficult to lock in when your back your lower back is hurting because you need that extra extra weight on the legs to make it make it worth a tap you know uh, but coffee gets to the ropes and breaks up the breaks up the hold um, later on in the match Coffey miss, misses the best for the bells, uh, which is the spinning lariat. He calls his spot. Trent Seven ducks out of the way. And that is missed. He goes straight into a springboard, jumping off the second rope onto the third rope and springboarding over the top into a crossbody, which was moved. Trent Seven ducks again, which, I mean, from a 300-pound man, that is impressive. Um, <laughs> Trent Seven ducks that again, manages to hit the Seven Star Lariat, but Joe Coffey shows every bit of what made him one of one of uh, Pete Dunne's toughest opponents in that match in Blackpool. Kicks out of the Seven Star Lariat. Not many people have done that, but Joe Coffey did. And he gains more momentum there. Trent Seven is shocked. Uh, Joe Coffey hits another power bomb and uh, on to, uh, gives uh, hits the power bomb. Obviously, focus again on the lower back of Trent Seven. Hits a one-legged Boston Crab, a half Boston Crab. Trent Seven nearly makes it to the ropes. Gets pulled back into the centre of the ring. Hits the full Boston Crab, both legs in the lock, sits down really deep. Trent Seven tries to get to the bottom rope, but ultimately that focus on the lower back in the early part of the match would give Joe Coffey the win as Trent Seven taps out for the first time, I think, in NXT UK. Um, and yeah, Joe Coffey picks up the win and some momentum going forward into that championship picture. Uh, obviously, he wants another shot at the title, again, taking Pete Dunne to the absolute limit. You've got Jordan Devlin wanting a shot at the title as well, and among others. Uh, but I think those two, along with Walter, are the um, two main contenders for 
Pete Dunne's UK Championship. Although that could be Walter's UK Championship at the end of NXT, NXT TakeOver New York on the 6th of April 2019. Again, we're going to be watching it live, so make sure you give us a tweet. Hashtag Wrestling Friends uh, to get in contact with us on social media. And we'll find you on there via Instagram, Twitter and Facebook. So your winner in this match, gaining momentum going forward into the title picture, is Joe Coffey, the Iron King. Oh, and so, after a hype package to get us ready for NXT TakeOver New York on the 6th of April, from Pete Dawn and Walter, showing us everything that's happened between those two, the tag matches, the uh, contract signing, the arrival of Walter straight after Pete Dawn's victory over Joe Coffey, um, that gets me ready for NXT TakeOver New York. Like I say, we're going to be watching it live. We're going to be watching it twice because I'm going to be watching it with Big Boss as well. Who's going to be on the show doing the review with me uh, on NXT TakeOver New York. So you'll finally get to see one of my best friends, the Big Boss, owner of the owner and proprietor of the Big Boss Book Club. Um, and uh, yeah, it's going to be fun. We're watching that, but this is everything that happened in NXT UK episode number 37. And yeah, it was a decent show, it was very watchable. Um, but I'm hoping that after NXT uh, TakeOver, that they'll start picking up on the matches again. Uh, because we, we were spoiled for a long time. We were spoiled by a lot of matches and not many promos. Now we seem to have a lot of promos and not many matches. With an hour's show, that's not, you know, I want more wrestling in my wrestling shows. Call me strange. Anyway, um, yeah, so that was episode number 37. Not one of the best, um, but still very watchable and moving storylines on nicely. Incidentally, we have an update on Noam Dye. He's had his scans, but uh, his knee has not blown and he's not torn any tendons or anything like that. So, wish him a speedy recovery. Obviously, Eddie Dennis is still out, uh, tearing his, uh, I think it's his shoulder into his pectoral muscle. So, wishing him a speedy recovery as well. Um, and uh, yeah, there's a lot of injuries going around at the moment in NXT UK, but anyone who is injured or has problems getting to shows, we wish you a speedy recovery from Cheap Shot Entertainment. And that is everything that happened on NXT UK episode number 37. It took place in the Coventry Sky Dome. We're in Glasgow next week, or Scotland, I believe, um, next week for the shows. And um, yeah. It's been okay so far. I've decided that I'm gonna I'm gonna probably cut off the NXT UK reviews uh, very soon. Uh, they seem to be my lowest viewed videos, so I'm taking a creative decision from that and getting some new content to the show to the channel as well. So uh, yeah, you can follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. <sighs> it's been an epic one, this one, isn't it? Um, Hit the subscribe button with a best for the bells and a seven star lariat on that notification bell to know when we upload new content to the channel. In the meantime, we can say goodbye to you. You are the Cheap Shot Nation and I have been your host Luke and we'll see you for some WrestleMania predictions and an NXT TakeOver review from Cheap Shot Entertainment. Thank you very much for watching, keep that subscription going and share us with your friends. Don't forget to leave us a comment and give us a thumbs up because that always helps as well. And I will see you next time. Goodbye.